a slight delay, we are inviting for the stage our first speaker, Arek Vanov, entrepreneur, venture investor, co-founder of a second lane airdrop factory, Commune.one, Wheezy and Berios Kedao. Alec is the author of two books, Operational Marketing and How to Find Money for Your Business. He is also the author of one of the largest personalized blockchain telegram channels. Alec will tell us today about leading fund strategies and how to find a unicorn. Alec, welcome. Thank you, Sasha. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, do we just start off or are there yes, any questions? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, That's cool. just your pitch. OK. Cool. So I guess I can present, uh, I could share the slides, right, if that's fine. And um, let me just upload this thing now. Uh, <clears throat> so hi, everyone. Um, let me just see where it is. Yes, the entire screen. So this. <clears throat> I hope it's working right now or probably not. I hope it is working now, right? Okay. So let's start with um, with uh, with a presentation. I'll um, I'll try to walk you through some of the things that we do. And before that, I wanted to give you, uh, a, a, you know, a very big glimpse at how we look at the industry itself on the consumer side, right? Because um, there's different players in the industry. There's developers, there's users, there's financial people, and so on. And uh, each of us are looking at this industry from from different angles. So for and with all of us, uh, you know, both developers and investors, of course, uh, we we all depend on how this industry is used, right? How the technology is used. So that's why it's quite crucial for for us to understand how people on the mass scale are regarding this industry. So and uh, and of course, it starts with a question: What is blockchain? And I mean, I won't bore you with, with lots of definitions, but for most people, whenever you touch blockchain. It all sounds like a white noise, noise, right? So, you know, explanations of Wikipedia are quite, are quite tough. So that's why people uh, jump on very uh, simple conclusions for them. So that blockchain is about Bitcoin. Bitcoin fluctuates in price, goes up and down. So that's why probably this is an instrument for traders or speculators. So not for me, not for like uh, my uh, general life, right? Because I'm not speculating, I'm not trading. So uh, in order to go away from this understanding, what we uh, suggest to um, as, as like another alternative view of this whole industry is to regard blockchain as a simple database. So in an essence, if we look at our life right now, we understand that we all, all of our lives are sort of um, 
you know, surrounded by accesses to this or that database uh, through like different applications that we use in our mobile phones or wherever, right? Passport citizenships, banks, uh, driving licenses, uh, you know, copyright, mobile services, social media, uh, emails, all of those things are basically some services where uh, the users are recorded in the database and uh, depending on their rights, they are either given some access or not given some access to certain features within this business vertical, right? And we're used to it. We don't look at the back end. We don't understand how it works, which is totally fine. The only problem with such businesses is that all those databases are what we call a centralized, which means that they're run by either businesses or government officials which means that there is at least a technical uh, possibility to do something with this data, right? Uh, to uh, close access, to limit the usage, uh, change things, uh, you know, in retrospect and, and yada, yada. So, so basically, if we go back to the blockchain as the database, uh, you know, uh, thinking uh, avenue, uh, we all understand that the, the the whole difference of this blockchain approach to databases is that it's the same story uh, that records certain uh, instances, uh, but it is since it is synchronized uh, every few seconds over like across uh, hundreds of thousands of different servers, miners, right? Um, then it just makes it very difficult for other people to change this uh, whatever is recorded in this database, right? So that, that's the core, the differentiator, really, on the use case, right, if we simplify it. Now, the question then is, what do we use it for, right? And the use cases, of course, are uh, is, is, is something that we're looking at at the moment, because that's where the business is, that's where the products are looking at, and that's where the money goes to. So the first solution for this, like, business vertical, for, for the... Uh, for this sort of database again, came with uh, apparently with Bitcoin. And for us to understand what is the business behind Bitcoin, is it's of course stated on the white paper on the title page. And that's what it's written, right? So it's Bitcoin is a peer to peer electronic cash system. In essence, it is Western Union. It's when people are transferring money across the borders, converting it from you know, local fiat currency to some unit of measurement internally. And then converting it back in a new country, um, you know, elsewhere. So that's it's absolutely the same business case, and uh, and uh, and that's what it is, right? That's what uh, you know the the innovation uh, that that came from. Now, with the uh, with the coming evolution of different business cases, you could see basically a hierarchy of what I was developing in uh, in our ecosystem so starting with ethereum with vitalik buterin, uh, buterin who just came in uh, a few years ago and said okay let's use the same blockchain database approach but then we introduced smart contracts where you could code your business logics uh, you know on top of this layer um, of uh, blockchain database Let, let's put it this way right and whatever you come up with the business cases that uh that that's i mean if people like it they will use it so the first case of course came with uh, with basically ico which is another idea of crowdfunding which existed before and of course exists now right with kickstarter indiegogo and some other uh projects then the other approach came with stable tokens which again is an uh, is is in essence an automation of central banks where you use reserves to uh, maintain the peg of your currency, right? Whether it's a local currency or it's a US dollar or something else. With DeFi, you automated a very primitive, uh, two primitive banking products, which is currency exchange and deposits and loans. And that also introduced some additional features and additional sort of notions uh, on the, you know, in, in the whole ecosystem. With NFT, you you automate registration of unique titles of ownership and of course it starts with ownership on on online right which is basically tailored to images to video and audio and then of course it goes on to the to the real world assets uh with like lots and lots of more iterations there and then of course with DAOs, you're literally automating corporate management through ownership and voting of different again tokens that you could use within your ecosystem so as you could see again this this one unique idea that you have one database 
uh, where you record all the transaction and you synchronize this database across tons and tons of uh, other servers so that it is more reliable now. Now there is verticals, uh, different verticals of business cases and, and use cases that people take, automate on the smart contracts and then offer it to the public. And that's where like all the innovation is coming from. And of course, for this business verticals to prosper, uh, a lot of infrastructure solutions are evolving as we speak right now. Of course, you need wallets, you need exchanges, you need alternative blockchains for different geographic or industry specific focuses. For that to pro prosper, you need cross chain bridges, you need scanners, you need oracles, you need mixers, miners, you know, like uh, middleware, and then some some industry players to tied all infrastructure all together so that you know like fast forward if we sort of compare the blockchain industry to what it was back then with internet right before the whole infrastructure was working right now we're not even asking ourselves a question like if i google something in the search engine uh how does this work on a technical scale so that i get my answers right so for, for that, you, you don't need to, you know, become a specialist to, to, you know, to use it, right? So that's why uh, whenever, whenever we're comparing, uh, you know, blockchain to the former internet back then, that's where we stand at the moment. Like more and more infrastructure is being developed, more and more people, like hundreds of teams literally, are, you know, emerging and, and developing a lot of products. And they, of course, each of them are, are struggling for their share within like all of those narratives that we just described business cases or the infrastructure layer layer and and of course if we go back to the question like how do i use it uh, for you know what do we do with it right so apparently you you approach it from two cases so i i either ask a question as a user how can i use the established ec ecosystem that's one narrative right the other is what do I do with it? How do I participate in it the, in, in something that I understand is becoming new so that I could prosper from it, right? So there's, there's a two very different approaches. And um, going from, you know, backwards, basically, if, if I want to participate in something new that grows up, then, of course, there's two ways of doing it, right? Either I launch my own project or I invest in somebody else's project, right? But in both cases, what you need, of course, is you need to see the trends you need to be well versed in like in the fields that you selected. You need to understand the bottlenecks uh, to measure the teams whether they're capable of of actually solving those bottlenecks. And of course, you need to spread the risks, right? Because you know you never know in in a thing that that uh, you know that grows uh, by itself. And I mean, and, and changes literally like every three four months. Now, if you want to use this as as just a general user, right? Then in most cases, since blockchain is it has started as as a like say a money alternative alternative to the traditional finance then of course you start with basic uh money needs like the way we use money right how do we use the money of course we we keep it somewhere we pay with it right so we transact uh money and then of course we use it to sort of grow our assets and if if we go through like our typical steps in the traditional financial markets what we do with money is usually going through the same steps as you could see on the slide right now. So like you, you put some money aside, maybe in a money box or something else for the reserve or whatever. Then we use banks for like simple deposits uh, to earn some yield on top of some, uh, some you know, money deposits. Then you usually purchase some real estate and try to make money off it probably. Um, then you end up buying structured products like gold, silver, silver deposit accounts in banks, insurance products, pension products. Then you start giving away loans to casual friends for like their businesses that you understand or you think you understand. And uh, then you go on to, of course, like capital markets to you know try to uh, do some portfolios, uh, make some portfolios of stocks, bonds, maybe IPOs, pre-IPO SPACs and whatever. And then, of course, you start in, uh, start interacting with financial managers. Now, funny enough that if you go into the blockchain um, and and you try to look at the current blockchain ecosystem, apparently, you you literally can do absolutely the same things with just with just you know some of those elements. They are uh, they 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 are more advanced, you know, versus the other ones, right? So, of course, you can keep. Um, you know your money in a bank account and alternatively you can keep at least some reserves in your personal wallets on 
uh, mobile phones or your you know cold wallets or whatever right in stable tokens at least to make sure that you are not susceptible to volatile you know price changes you can make deposits in stable coins across like tons of platforms you can buy real estate through stable i mean through different um uh, different uh, crypto projects right now again sitting in any part of the world buying real estate in dubai in indonesia thailand uh, new york and whatnot there's structured projects there, there's obviously venture capital investments right uh, part of the businesses that we're dealing with there's capital markets or let's say an alternative to capital markets whenever you're buying facebook apple or you know spacex shares alternatively you buy into the businesses of bitcoin ethereum and some other projects that you need to understand and if you expect them to grow of course you know you you participate in those right and then of course you can also go back to some uh, financial managers who you could uh, you know structure your portfolio with so going back to us with commune uh we understand that it's uh, it's quite difficult to to manage like pretty much all the narratives right now in blockchain and they evolve and become more and more sophisticated so that's why we focus only on two products here one of them is venture rounds in top international web3 projects um that are very similar to your you know venture deals or pre-ipo ipo deals in the traditional market and then we're also specializing in li liquid DeFi strategies so basically where you have crypto assets they're sitting on you on your wallets and then of course you can you know basically stake them somewhere to make sure that it generates some yield but only in DeFi, let's say in decentralized matter uh, avoiding all, all centralization risks and just going through this we we believe this is one of the largest opportunities um as uh, multi-coin people are saying it's it's like a you know at a time for the generational wealth creation because that's exactly what happened with internet era when lots of people actually made multi-millions uh, of dollars worth just simply by building something or participating in the rounds of of the projects that uh, or businesses that we know of right now right the amazons the facebook's the googles and whatnot so right now we understand that crypto is uh, is actually over is close to half a billion uh users right now uh, last year, in only DeFi, transacted over $1.5 trillion, and only $8 trillion transaction volume is in stablecoins. So when, you know, we have to understand that stablecoins is actually the largest part of transactional volume right now. Uh, blockchain VCs are outperforming by far any traditional VCs uh because again like the the rounds of uh, from investment to liquidity are much shorter and the uh the rewards are might much higher so uh obviously that's why it's it, you know the outperformance performance is uh, is is pretty obvious and um, even with that of course like within our venture division at commune uh we understand that there is like so many nar narratives but we are we're focusing only on four of them First of all, is decentralized infrastructure with just some of the things that are listed there. Account obstruction, which is a big thing for the use cases right now. Web3 apps and privacy layers. So these are the four narratives that we're diving into literally every day, looking at projects internationally and investing into them. In um, uh, And again, like the narrative is very, very easy. Um, I mean, we can discuss maybe during the question and answers if there is any, why we're picking this way. But we are investing only in international teams. We're not leading the rounds. We're following the large VCs. Uh, of course, it's it's all about diversification. It's impossible to make money if you invest only two, three, five, ten deals. It has to be over thirty uh, deals. And yeah, and there's, there's some legal wrappers around it to minimize the risk. Some of the some of the investments that we've done so far, over fifty projects, fourteen of which uh, have become uniform uh, unicorns. Uh, unicorns, sorry. So basically, going over one billion um, worth uh, in, in capitalization, and then just this is just a list of a few of them uh, of the projects that we participated in early rounds, and of course, continuing to invest right now. And the last but not the least uh, avenue is DeFi. Um, again, th this has started as uh, Biroska DAO, DeFi asset management, since mid 2019, and became uh, we became public. I think it was on 3rd of February 2020. So that takes it to full 2020, 21, 22, and 23rd year. So we're almost four years old. 
fully transparent, fully on chain. You can literally go to all the wallets of those DAOs right now and see all the transactions since the very first transaction on February 3rd. And since then, we, we just see this industry booming because centralized solutions brought a lot of attention but crashed, uh, proving um, uh, only that DeFi actually did sustain this crash and still thriving. Um, there's different business models in DeFi. We can obviously talk about this. Um, and uh, and the you know the earning models are always changing, so that's why we see a lot of potential for professional players in this field. Because of course, for the, for the general public to spot opportunities, you know, uh, quickly switch from one you know one sort of earning instrument to another is becoming more and more difficult. And of course, there's hacks, right? Hacks, exploits, and so on. Only uh, last year, I think we counted probably. 142 hacks of different types and there was like a few posts that i i also you know showed on my channel to to show what exactly was happening you can see it over here that it's it's, it's a big mess right to avoid them and uh knock wood we we avoided all those pitfalls never lost a single dollar to investors to all those hacks and these exploits there's three strategies going from conservative which is 100 uh, stable coins to moderate to very high risk and of course, there is like different performance layer uh, levels and the way how it's done on, on an average, the stablecoin uh, strategy uh, brought us 12% uh, uh, annual yield uh, on average each year. Of course, there's higher drop, you know, jumps and, and, uh, and uh, you know, and drops, of course. The moderate strategy uh, on average uh, got us 30% yield. And uh, this high risk, it was, uh, you know, it brought us 65%. It's still going. And on top of that, of course, we, we like, you know, there's tons of educational resources that we have. We've done 200 events, uh, over 30 interviews of like different top uh, uh, people in the field. You probably know Matic, you probably know Phantom, you probably know uh, Solana, Polkadot, uh, Origin, you know, Zerio, and some of the other guys. Uh, so all of those people. Uh, are within our network. So through that, of course, we see a lot of deal flows, uh, a lot of insights in terms of where the industry is going and so on and so forth. And uh, this is our team, of course. And uh, I guess this would be it unless we have any any uh, more uh, discussions uh, and uh, maybe questions from uh, from the audience. So please, yeah, join uh, the Telegram group. It's in, in, in uh, Russian, apparently, but... Uh, uh, there is an English channel as well, so once you get in and maybe you know leave a note and any comment, we could redirect you anywhere else. So thanks for that. I hope it was valuable, and uh, I guess we're ready. Uh, we're ready to go into the question and answers. I don't know if you if you actually see this, guys. Yes, we see that. And thank you, Alec, for the very interesting talk, uh, like a good advice, and also sharing the available resources. I do not see now questions. Uh, let's give another half minute for the people. I'm checking and I'm monitoring. And guys, if you are listening to us, you can leave your questions either on the YouTube channel, like depending on where you're watching us, you can leave uh, questions at the community portal at Q&A session. Uh, Q&A section, there's a button, the orange button, Q&A. You can press there and post your questions. You can also leave your questions uh, on the chat, on the YouTube chat. Uh, like on our live uh, translation. I'm checking both and let me see, there's nothing currently. Oh, yes, there's a question. I'm uh, reading that a whole. Good day, Alec. Thank you so much for your speech. It was really good and helpful. I've looked at your website. Have you thoughts about redesigning it? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, then, and, and then I mean, mm, yeah. So, so yeah, we, I mean, apparently it just so happens that uh, I end up managing quite a number of projects right now. Right. And I mean, Sasha, thanks for mentioning pretty much all of them. 
Uh, and uh, I do agree that Berioska needs redesigning for the user experience. Uh, we probably would do that at some point of time. Um, for, for now, it's a bit of a stretch of our resources, but we absolutely agree that it does need uh, some redesigning for, for you know, better UX, better user experience, of course. Like we have another question, and that's from Igor Maximchuk. Uh, he's asking uh, about, like, what is your opinion about NFT and protection of intellectual property? Well, it's a huge industry, and uh, I mean, l l let's be honest, right? So there's there's two technological, let's say, innovations with blockchain. One of them is fungible tokens, and again, the verticals we've discussed, uh, and, and of course, there will be more business verticals as we speak uh, evolving. The NFT is about registering your intellectual rights, your in, let's say, your 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 unique rights, right, to to something, and of course. All of those registration things naturally start with online assets. And, and again, like what do we regard as online assets? Those would be images, those would be videos and audio files, right? And, um, and that's why we see like a huge explosion uh, in, in, again, in NFTs, like the images. And then, of course, you know, the mu music industry is fiddling with this uh, uh, video streaming and and so on, on and so forth. So that that is still not even close to to its top, right? Uh, there's there's tons of things that uh, can be done, and there's uh, quite a number of projects that are that are working on it. And then and then of course it moves on to the uh, to the uh, w what is now like labeled as uh, RWA, which is uh, real world assets in any form and shape, right? Starting from real estate to I don't know, automobile to uh, traditional stocks uh, and bonds and uh, and whatnot. So that, of course, is is basically a narrative that is linking the industry to the security um, uh, tokens or security uh, regulation in each individual country. But it's becoming clearer and clearer how to deal with that. So that's why it's it's obviously something that um, that we'll see quite a blast you know in the coming years so uh, as a technology i guess everybody understand that there's there's like it's really unique the business usage is always a very interesting you know point who and how they will be using it i like uh, if i may to add uh, igor uh, on thursday we do have the separate presentation about that just by coincidence that's my topic of pitch on this conference oh beautiful so just join <laughs> us on thursday and we actually have the separate talk about the intellectual property and tracing that it's also about ai fantastic yeah uh, I'm checking more questions and yeah, huh. Alec, I don't know what is your traditional answer on the question. That's a typical question to any blockchain professional. In what coin would you invest? <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's the question we've seen thousands of times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, l let me give you know a bit of a like expanded answer to this. So usually these answers come from the newbies, right? From people who are just making the first steps, which is good. Uh, now, uh, since you're making your first steps, it's very diff you know it's very easy to make mistakes. So in order to avoid mistakes, you you need to sort of big you know bid on the big things, right? So the big things in our industry there are just two two projects there's a bitcoin and ethereum so so in order to get in, like accustomed to this industry to understand how it works to get used to some like functionality features you know opening up a wallet buying it you know transferring it swapping from one to another uh it's easier to just start buying bitcoin and ethereum and not in one bit but using what is uh, actually also a strategy that comes from a traditional uh, financial markets, which is called a DCA strategy, dollar co cost averaging. So basically, what you do is, let's say you have a hundred, like, or let's say a thousand dollars worth of money, right, and you're ready to spend it all on uh, on crypto. 
So what you do is you don't go and spend it all in one bid, you know, buy like 500 for Bitcoin or 500 Ethereum, but you cut it, let's say in like, I don't know, 50 pieces or 30 pieces. And then every week you buy, let's say on Sundays, you always buy a portion, you know, one tenth or one fiftieth of, of uh, you know, of whatever you hold right now. So that's that's how you buy into the assets but you don't buy it at a certain level and then don't sleep well at night when when and if the market drops right and then you sit and you know and cry your eyes out so that that averages you out your purchasing price so that over mid term and long term long term usually you become better off so uh yeah for the newbie dci strategy bitcoin ethereum uh, just to sort of get accustomed with thank you alec we are at the end of our session. Thank you for the interesting answers, for the interesting topics, and hope to see you on our events and in our community. And guys, for those who were asking about the QR code for Telegram channel, we will post the materials in blockchain professional social media. You will be able to get it from there. Thank you. Great. Bye -bye. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks, Sasha.